Anyway, this cake, you bake it at 350 degrees for one hour. Okay, you should check it. Set the timer for 45 minutes and check it. See how it's, how it's doing after 45 minutes, okay? And one thing you want to do is take this, take this pan, and just a few times hit it on the table. And you'll notice that I'm holding my finger on this so that the pan doesn't, so this doesn't pop open and the pan, the cake batter goes everywhere. So hit it a few times on the table, 350 degree oven, one hour, okay? So here I'll put it in the oven and then we'll start making the icing. All right. Now you're probably saying to yourself, and rightly so, this is a half hour show. So this cake's not gonna be done until well into the next show that you're watching. So, ah, don't worry. I have a cake that I already made. That one we're gonna ice. All right, so for the icing, double boiler, okay? I have a little bit of water in this pan. Now see, you can see that the, the, the water in the pan does not touch the bowl, okay? That's important. You want this to be heated with steam, all right? And I highly recommend you go to Target or somewhere and get yourself um, six or ten stainless steel bowls. Okay, they're excellent. They're lightweight, unbreakable. They don't hold um, bacteria, easy to clean. These things come in handy. Anyway, enough of a lecture on that. Okay, so you have your double boiler. This pan is hot. I take tablespoon of butter, unsalted butter, very important, no salt, and four ounces. These are one ounce pieces of semi-sweet chocolate. These are made specifically for baking. I'm going to bake, I'm going to bake, I'm going to melt this chocolate and the butter together, okay? What I like about these is that they're very thin, okay? They melt really, really quickly. Okay, so I'm going to mix, melt these together, okay, and I like to spread them out a little bit so that these little chocolate, these are called chocolate naps, nice word, so that the, the surface of the, the bottom part of the chocolate is touching the inside of the bowl, okay, so I let those melt, they melt fairly quickly, in the meantime I can just talk to you, I take about a cup a little over maybe a cup and two tablespoons or so of powdered sugar, okay? And I'm going to sift it. I have my trusty old sugar sifter. And this is uh, something that I'm going to talk about now while the, while the chocolate is melting. I never wash this. I, I never sift anything that's wet. It's always used to dry things. And uh, the reason is that these parts of this have a tendency sometimes to rust. So always when I'm finished with sifting flour or sugar or something, I just wipe it out with a damp cloth and that's it. And let it dry. So I don't want this to sit and get all rusty. No good. Anyway, um, I also have a tablespoon of our powdered cocoa that I'll add when this is when this is melted, it's getting there. And a little bit of vanilla, half a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'll mix all of those together. And I like to add a little bit of sour cream to my chocolate icings. It helps to make it, it adds a little bit of flavor, but also it helps to make it shiny. And I have some icing that I made and I'll show you what I mean. And you'll see it while we're making this, while I'm mixing this together. And also, I'm going to use six tablespoons of whipping cream, okay? So I'm going to review this. Four ounces semi-sweet chocolate, a tablespoon of butter, a cup plus two tablespoons of powdered sugar that I'll sift, and that way you don't get lumps. One tablespoon of powdered cocoa, half a teaspoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of sour cream, and six tablespoons of whipping cream. 
I got everything yeah everything <laughs> gotta remember that so once this is melted it's almost there it's almost there all right be just a couple of seconds here and this will be melted all right here we go now hope you can see this okay now the first step once this is all melted and blended the first step is to whip in your whipping cream okay six tablespoons whipping cream I'm gonna whip this in here make it nice and smooth all right see now it's shiny I hope you can see this now it's shiny the problem is well I'll add the vanilla half a teaspoon of vanilla cocoa powder all right mix those up All right, let that cocoa powder blend and melt in there. And now I will take my trusty sifter, powdered sugar, sift that in there. See, the reason I'm sifting the powdered sugar is that sometimes you get um, little lumps. Now here's some, I don't know if you can see these, but they're in there and you can get these little lumps in there. And so you'll have white spots in your icing. You don't want white spots, okay? So I just reach in there and sip them, push them right through, okay? There you are. Now, when I mix this, the powdered sugar sometimes makes the icing look a little dull, okay? I have to cook this in there, although this time it looks nice and shiny. All right, looking pretty good. I let that dissolve. Still pretty liquidy, and I'll add my teaspoon of sour cream. All right. Now what this does, the sour cream just brings it out, makes it so much more shiny. I'm not sure exactly why, but I don't really have to know. I only have to understand that it does it. Okay, now it's all blended. Everything's set. I take this off. And then, now this needs time to cool, okay? So if you, if you want to do this, if you're in a hurry, you can put this on another bowl with ice, okay? And then you can stir it, and it'll cool very quickly. Um, you do want to, you, you want to take and stir it as it's cooling, so you don't end up, you could end up with lumps. And um, if it cools too much, then it hardens up, and then you got to, heat it again to make it soft so you can spread it it's a, it's a hassle it's better to just let it sit till it reaches room temperature okay so i have to let this sit but i do have let's get these these bowls out of the way okay i have some icing that i already made all right and i also have Look at this. Who's cooking here? Let's make a mess. All right. So. I have also a cake. Cake that I've baked. And what I want to do is obviously cut the cake in half, layer it. And I'm going to take this preserves. Now, you can use raspberry preserves. You can use just an apricot. You can use marmalade. You can use all different things. This is a, a, a preserves. It's orange and apricot. Okay, it's similar to a, similar to a marmalade. It's not quite as strong because the apricots do a little bit of. Uh, they just kind of mellow out the oranges. Okay, so 